This is a continuation of section 1.1 for Mac 1105. And we were looking at um, graphing our own graphs when suggested certain X values. Now we've moved on to talk about the viewing rectangles that they talk about, which is the window within which you're going to get your graph to appear. So we had talked about um, when they give you a window like this, this is how they'll describe it. The first set of numbers are with respect to the x-axis. The second set of numbers are with respect to the y-axis. And they're going to mention three numbers. This very first number is um, the x-min. Okay, so the first set of numbers is all about the x's. This is called the min. Second number is called the max. And this third number is called the scale. In other words, you're jumping in increments of how many. So if there's a one here, that means every grid mark counts for one. Smallest number is negative three. Biggest number is positive three. And that would be on the x's. And then the next time, the next set of numbers that they mention will be with respect to how they're going to design the y-axis. This one stretches from negative five to five. So this is the min. This is the max on the y values. This is the scale. So just learning how to read the windows that they're telling you to use. Okay, when you go to a problem like this, which there will be some in my lab math, where they'll, you'll be given a window and asked to describe it. So with an understanding that this first set of numbers is with respect to the x's so that you know to be looking at the x-axis. Second set of numbers is with respect to the y's. And this happens to be the min, the max, and the scale. And that's true for both the x's and the y's. First number is min, then max, then scale. So looking at the x-axis and just count the grid marks. Don't go beyond that. You can see that. Now let's check that scale. Each one of the grid marks counts for one, just so you can count appropriately. So this is one, two, three, four, five. This goes from negative five all the way out to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it goes from negative five on the min to 15 on the max. And the scale is one. Then on the y-axis, it goes as high, it goes as low as do the min first, since that's the first number that they asked for. This goes to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, there's 15 notch marks here. However, the scale is 2. So this is, instead of counting in increments of 1, you're counting in increments of 2. So it would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. You're going all the way to negative 30. And that is because each one counts for two. That's what it means to have a scale. If the scale is two going down this way, then it's two going up this way. It has to have the same scale all along that axis. So this would be two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, y min, y max, x scale of two. And then you can answer these questions right from the window. X min, negative 5. X max is 15. Y min is negative 30. Y max is 10. And then going to the next question, if you're asked to use the rectangular winner ne window negative 6 to 6 with a scale of 1, and then on your Y's, negative 4 to 4 with a jump of 5, So let's see, um, what would be the x-min? Don't forget this first set of numbers is with regard to the x's. The second set of numbers is with regard to the y's. And the x-min here would be negative 6. And the x-max would be 6. And the x-scale would be 1. Let's change this to a 1 because that doesn't even make sense. Let's change that to a 1. So we're going to use y min of negative 4. 
y max of 4, and then the scale would be 1. Okay, then we, there are some problems in my lab math, and you're, you're just seeing, you know, just a variety of the different kinds of problems that you're going to see in this section. Sometimes you'll see a graph like this, and they'll be trying to see if you understand what points on this picture are called the x-intercepts. There may be more than one, that's why there's an s there, and which are called the y-intercepts. An x-intercept, by definition, is just points that are on the picture or on the graph, that are on the x-axis, therefore they're called x-intercepts. Points that are on the y-axis are called y-intercepts, which the definitions are right here. So you have two x-intercepts, one at negative one and one at positive one. That is where this graph hits the x-axis, negative one, positive one. Okay, then for the y-intercept, it hits right here at positive one. Okay, moving to the next page where we have more graphs, another graph of a parabola. And you're asked, what is the x-intercept? Where does this graph hit the x-axis? Well, it doesn't hit, hit it at all, so there is no x-intercept. Or you can just put none. Y-intercept, the graph does hit the y-axis right at 2. So it has a y-intercept. Okay, and when you're naming these, let's just take a look at how this is defined. Okay, here it just says that the y-intercept is the y-coordinate. They just want the y-coordinate of the point on the y-axis that's on the graph, and the x-intercept is just the x-coordinate. So that's what we've been doing. We have just been naming either the x or the y-coordinate when asked for the intercept. Okay, using this question here, next question down, we're going to write the sentence as an equation in two variables. In other words, we're going to use a y and an x in order to take this sentence right here and write it as an equation. Then we're going to plug in the values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for our x values after we create the equation, and we're going to graph it. So practice at creating the equation of a line and graphing it. So it says the y value is, means equal, three times the x value. Three times the x value increased by, that means add, increased by 2. So there's your equation. Then it tells you to use these x values right here, one at a time, of course. You're going to use those x values, figure out what the y partner is each time. Okay, so here we go. We're going to plug in negative 2 for x, then add 2. That would give you negative 6 plus 2, which is equal to negative 4. So you have one point. I'll keep track of the points right over here, that when you plug in negative 2, you get a partner of negative 4. Okay, next thing we're going to do is plug in negative 1. Then we're going to add 2. So this would be negative 3, add 2, you get negative 1. So the partner for negative 1 is also negative 1. And we're going to be plotting these points to get the graph. Next value we're supposed to plug in is 0. So it's, you're just using this equation each time you plug in and plugging in the different x values. So 3 times 0 increased by 2. This would be 0 plus 2 or just 2. So when plugging in 0, you get a 2. Next value we're supposed to plug in is the number 1. So this would be 3 plus 2 is 5. So when plugging in 1, you get a 5 for an answer. Last number you're supposed to plug in is a 2. So it's 3 times 2 plus 2. So this would be 6 plus 2, 8. So when plugging in 2, you get an 8 for an answer. Okay, this is a linear equation, so expect a line when you plot these points. So you're going to be plotting negative 2, negative 4, then negative 1, negative 1, then 0, 2, 
then 1, 5, and then 2, 8, which is going to kind of run off the grid. So we'll just go with these points right here. And there's your line. So we created the equation. We plugged in the values that were asked for, demonstrating our work at each step, and then took the points that were created through this work and created the graph. So again, don't come to the test relying on nothing but the calculator be able to show the work. Now we're going to create a, take a chance at creating another equation. And in this problem, it says the y value is the square of x the square of x decreased by 1. Okay, then we're asked to, to plug in several, several values into this equation. First one that we're going to plug in for x, square it, and then subtract 1 is the value negative 2. So this is going to be negative 2 squared. Anything you square is get, becomes positive. So this is going to be 4. Negative 2 squared is 4. Subtract 1, you get 3. We'll keep track of the points here. When plugging in negative 2, get 3 for an answer. Now you should know that this is a parabola. Any time that there is a square on the x, we've been studying specific shapes caused by specific conditions on the x. A square on the x causes a parabolic shape, so plan for that to happen. Okay, next we're going to, and these are just points that we're creating on the parabola. Next, we're going to plug in negative 1. Then we're going to subtract 1. So this any number squared is positive, so that's going to be 1. Take away 1 is equal to 0. So when plugging in negative 1, we get a 0. Negative 1, 0. We also have negative 2, 1, 2, 3. And you can wait till the end to plug these in if you want, to plot them rather. Next value we're going to plug in is 0. We're going to square it, then subtract 1. This is 0. Take away 1, which is negative 1. So when plugging in 0, we end up getting a negative 1. 0 for x, negative 1 for y. Okay, then going with the next point, which is positive 1. You're going to get the same answer as you got here, because whether you square negative 1 or positive 1, it's still 1. And when you subtract 1, you're going to get a 0. Same answer you got here. So when plugging in 1, we get a 0. Same thing's going to happen when you plug in this 2. I mean, you could do the work, but you're going to get the same answer as when you plugged in negative 2, which was a 3. So when plugging in 2, you get a 3. So it is 1, 0, and then 2, 3. These are mirror images. These are mirror images. This is called the vertex. Connect these in a parabolic manner. Okay, so we created our own equation. We created, generated points from the equation by using the suggested values for x and working till we got an answer, or in other words, a y partner, and then plotting the points to get the parabolic shape suggested by x squared. In the last problem, on this modeling problem, you have a real life situation by, that is modeled by a graph. It says the graph shows a percentage of high school seniors who used alcohol and marijuana during the 30 days prior to being surveyed. And the data is displayed by way of this graph. This line demonstrates alcohol use by seniors. This line demonstrates marijuana use by seniors. And these are the equations that created these lines. And the, the question's pretty simple. It says A is for an equation that models alcohol use. M is an equation that alcohols, that um, demonstrates marijuana use. And the question is just use the appropriate line graph. This is the line for alcohol use, marijuana use. And it says um, where N is the number of years, use the appropriate line graph to determine the percentage of seniors who used marijuana in 1985. So I darkened in the numbers here. This is 1985. Just go up to the line that demonstrates marijuana use and then over to the y-axis. So in 1985, there was 30% of the seniors who were using um, marijuana in that particular year, just lining up the numbers. And that completes 1.1.